Joining me now is Eddie Gall, Jr., professor and chair of the Department of African-American Studies at Princeton University, and Nicole Hannah-Jones, founder of the Center for Journalism and Democracy at Howard University and creator of the landmark 1619 Project and author of the accompanying book, The 1619 Project. Nicole, the crux of your 1619 Project aims to reframe the country's history by placing the consequences of slavery and the contributions of black Americans at the center of our national narrative. Exactly what it seems that Virginia is trying to block. Your book has been extensively challenged. Does it surprise you that this is happening at the state level? No, I mean, absolutely not. We know that Glenn Youngkin run, ran his uh, campaign on this idea of uh, teaching a more sanitized history that would protect the feelings of white children. Uh, we know that history and how it's taught has always been contested in the United States, that so much of what we call history is really memory. It is uh, selectively uh, putting certain things into curricula that gives us a certain concept of what America is. But Everything that happened in history happened. It really is about what do we teach? Uh, what do we teach about what happened? What do we put in? What do we what do we leave out? And this uh, new curriculum that was occurring in Virginia was crafted largely by conservative groups, including the Fordham Institute. And it's very clear by what they are leaving out and what they are putting in. What vision of America they want school children to learn? Yeah, the, this whole idea of free markets, all of that is quite interesting in the way they're trying to frame it. Eddie, groups like Moms for Liberty are gaining steam nationwide. Now, you're seeing a map on your screen with the different counties in each state that have a Moms for Liberty chapter. It shows that the book banning and curriculum restrictions are not happening organically. This is very much a coordinated effort. Can you tell me more about this? Sure. You have Moms for Liberty doing what they're doing. You have other organizations in places like Texas and South Carolina and Virginia. Uh, and you have the 1776 PAC that's funding them and also, you know, the kind of consultant class in the, in the Republican Party who's trying to put forward uh, this broader vision of the country. We need to understand, I think it's very clear, that the kinds of stories we tell matter in terms of the kinds of people we become, who we take ourselves to be. And what we choose to leave out of our stories oftentimes reveals the limits of our conceptions of justice. Who and what we leave out of our stories exposes the limits of our idea of justice. So what we're seeing is a narrowing of character, a kind of attempt to produce a certain vision of the country in order to produce certain people. And we saw this happen at the end of Radical Reconstruction with the Dunning School and Columbia University telling a particular story about construction, Reconstruction that characterized black folk in a particular sort of way that shaped the conscience of generations of white Americans. So we're seeing it happen again with big money behind it. So, so big money. For, and it's, it's interesting because it's a concerted effort that you see not only in book banning, but on abortion, on anti-immigration. All, all of it is seeming to come from a very organized group that you're absolutely right, seems organic, but absolutely is not with a lot of money behind it. So, Eddie, I want to follow up because a judge blocked Governor DeSantis's Stop Woke Act. He wrote, quote, it was a bright, cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13, and the powers in charge of Florida's public university system have declared the state has unfettered authority to muzzle its professors in the name of freedom. Now, that first line, it's a quote from 1984 by George Orwell. Judge Walker was appointed to the federal bench by former President Barack Obama. That's true. But is this a model? Is it through the courts that we can stop this type of you know, trying to dominate the, the school books that basically erases so many Americans from the storytelling and from how we got here? Well, the courts, you know, are, are one path uh, and only one path. Uh, we have to organize on the local level. Uh, we have to understand that, as Baldwin says, and I'm paraphrasing him, ignorance allied with power is dangerous. Right. It's almost is, 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 is a kind of combination for evil in some ways. So it, the courts one path, but we have to also mobilize and organize at the local level to understand what these folks are doing in terms of school boards. We've seen this strategy before. It was the strategy that led to the Reagan revolution. We know how it works. So we need to not only challenge in the courts, we need to be challenging in the streets as well. So something, Nicole, that we also find very much is that they use critical race theory as code switching as code words, as a dog whistle. Can you explain to our audience what that actually means and that, the, and that it's actually not being taught in schools? 
Well, so one, uh, the fact that so many Americans now know the term critical race theory is the sign of a, a, a highly successful propaganda campaign by the conservative, often aided in conservative movement, sorry, often aided and abetted by journalists. Um, but critical race theory is a highly sophisticated legal analysis of structural racism. It really seeks to answer why some 60 years after we banished uh, discrimination by law, uh, why do we still have so much inequality, particularly amongst Black Americans, but amongst other marginalized groups? So no, uh, most schools are not teaching this. But I think the, the problem with how progressives tried to combat this campaign was to run away from it. It would actually mm -hmm. have been a good thing. If we were getting a, a sophisticated analysis of structural inequality in America in our classrooms, it is not evil that we need to run away from. Um, and instead, what I think we, we need to understand from these campaigns is what conservatives get that sometimes I think uh, people who want a more accurate rendering his, of history don't, is that narrative drives policy. And so what they're trying to do is shape the narrative in America that really justifies power, that justifies the, the racial and economic hierarchies that we already have, that gives this vision of America that doesn't lead us to question why do we have the unequal society that we have? And I wish that um, people on the other side would get more organized because Professor Gold is, Gold is right, that it's not, we're not going to win these battles in the courts. Uh, mm -hmm. The battles are going to be won at the school board level when people who actually want a more accurate teaching of history are showing up just as intensely as those who are opposing this. Well, and I don't think it's by accident. I mean, this is a question I'm going to briefly ask both of you. It's not by accident that this is happening right now in America, where when you look at the classrooms, it's a majority minority. And it's not by accident that we're not trying to actually educate our systems and ourselves about these systemic structures to get out of making sure that we are closer to that more perfect union. So I'll ask you first, Professor, and then I'll ask you, Nicole, this very, Terry, what can teachers do? to make sure that our children right now are getting the proper education despite these incendiary movements that we're seeing? Well, they're going to have to be courageous and teach the truth. They're going to have to engage in what, you know, uh, the late um, uh, uh, literary critic Edward Said called contrapuntal readings. They're going to have to put, um, you know, Fred, uh, Thomas Jefferson in conversation with uh, David Walker. They're going to have to put uh, the founders in conversation with Frederick Douglass. We're going to have to read across uh, uh, the vast, vast diversity of America. Remember, there's immigration, immigration debates. Voter right, voting rights debates, the attack on January 6th, the attack on CRT, quote unquote. All of this is related. All of this is related to the general panic that white folks seem like they're losing their footing, their grip on the country, and they want a nation that is fundamentally a white nation. And the rest of us should simply shut up and be grateful. So, Nicole, what one one book that folks should read besides yours quickly? Oh, God, how, how can one how can one even <laughs> one. answer that question? But, um, <laughs> right? uh, I mean, black reconstruction, if you, if you want to un understand what we're seeing in America right now, there's a great essay. I teach it to my students at the, the, it's the final essay in the book. It's called The Propaganda of History. And um, those words that Du Bois writes about the way that uh, history is often uh, lies uh, agreed upon. Um, Wonderful. I so think it's, it's so what we're seeing today. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eddie Gold and Nicole Hanna. I wanted to know what you were reading so that other folks can. Apologize for cutting you off, but we'll have you back on. Thank you so much for watching.